From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. And there, Titans talk on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on another Victory Monday. A 25-16 win for the Titans over the Colts yesterday at Nissan Stadium. And there is so much to get into about this one. First off, it's a win over the Colts at home. That doesn't happen very much. Just two times in the last decade, so you have to celebrate that if you're a Titans fan. Ryan Tannehill was fantastic. He now owns a quarter of the team's wins against Indianapolis. And that shouldn't be overlooked. Because for the longest time in this series, Indianapolis has owned Tennessee. And what's the biggest reason why? It's not a curse. It's not, it's not some voodoo thing about this series between the two teams. The reason why is pretty simple. The Colts had Peyton Manning for a long time. And then they had Andrew Luck. And those two guys were, at the time, one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the league during those years. The Titans never had guys who could match that up. Steve McNair went into some battles with Peyton Manning for a few years, but that was only a two, three, four-year window. And then it became Manning and then Luck against a whole bunch of Titans quarterbacks that didn't really mix. It comes as no surprise that two of the Titans wins over the last decade, one of those wins at home before yesterday, was Marcus Mariota against Jacoby Brissett. It wasn't Peyton Manning. It wasn't Andrew Luck. It was one of those years when somebody else was at the helm of the Colts offense. So the difference right now in this series is the Titans have the better quarterback. Ryan Tannehill is the best quarterback in the AFC South right now. And you saw that yesterday, which exemplifies the shift in the dynamic of the series but you really saw how good Tannehill was yesterday because statistically it wasn't his best game it wasn't a 300 yard passing game it wasn't a perfect QB rating game but what you saw yesterday was you saw a game in which his most proven wide receiver in this system A.J. Brown goes down lane, pulls a hamstring on the second series of the game, never returns. He was in street clothes during the second half. Julio Jones, who's a seven-time pro bowler at wide receiver, barely played in the second half, didn't play at all in the fourth quarter. We'll get to more on that in a moment. Anthony Ferkser is his best tight end, out for a second straight week. So where does he go to when he has to pass? Ryan Tannehill found a way to get it done yesterday. He found a way to complete 18 of 27 passes. He found a way to throw three touchdowns to three different receivers. One of them had his first touchdown catch as a Titan. Another one had his first ever touchdown catch in the NFL. And then the other one had his second career touchdown on those passes. Not exactly A.J. Brown and Julio Jones. But that's how Ryan Tannehill got it done. And he also got it done by running, using his legs. He's a dual threat quarterback, but he's a pocket quarterback. He runs the system, but he has the ability when called upon to either run a designed play and run it effectively or scramble. And yesterday what you saw is you saw him scramble. When those receivers didn't get open, when they weren't able to step up to the occasion in certain times, Tannehill made a play himself. And we saw that early on. First, first down of the game for the Titans came on a Tannehill scramble. We saw the biggest play of the day come on a Tannehill scramble. And then late in the game when they're trying to milk the clock, go down the field, hopefully get a field goal to push it to nine, but also keep that clock moving. He scrambles out of the pocket, gets to the edge, beats the defender out there to get to the first down marker. He kind of tight ropes the sideline, but he also falls forward, getting to the first down marker and staying in bounds. Let that clock tick away. Big, big play, very heady play by Ryan Tannehill. And that's what he did yesterday. And that, to me, is what sets them apart. Julio Jones is a Hall of Famer. 
A.J. Brown is a star in this league when he's healthy and playing at the level we've seen him play for the first two years. Derrick Henry is an MVP caliber running back, and he was great again yesterday with 113 rushing yards. No big home runs, but just continually pounding away and getting yards. And that's impressive to me because it was just so consistent. It was like four yards every carry for three and a half hours. That's what Derrick Henry did yesterday. And he continues to show up week in and week out. The nicks and bruises don't bother him a bit. But the big thing about the passing game is as good as those two wide receivers are, and as much as the other guys stepped up yesterday, we saw it yesterday. When, who, when A.J. Brown goes down, you still had Julio Jones. You still had some of those other guys. When Julio came out in the fourth quarter, the other guys continued to step up and make plays. You know the thing I don't want to test with this offense is what happens if Ryan Tannehill goes down. You might have A.J. Brown and Julio Jones out there, but I don't want to see the offense with Logan Woodside. I just don't. I, I think that's a really bad scenario for the Titans. And that's how valuable Tannehill is. And that's what you saw yesterday. Because it wasn't the A-team around him. It was an unusual supporting cast. But he was able to get the job done. Props to Ryan Tannehill. He played a great game yesterday. Even if the stats don't completely show it, he was absolutely pivotal to the Titans being able to win that game. Also, credit to the defense. Much maligned last year, struggles in week one, not a good first half in Seattle last week, but they turned the corner in that halftime locker room at Lumen Field because they came out in the second half in overtime and held the Seahawks to just six points. They got off the field three and out in three of the final four possessions of that game as the Titans came back to win. And that carried over to yesterday. The Colts had just one touchdown on the day. They finished with 16 points, stopped in the red zone twice, and held the field goals. That's how you win. You make people have to drive the field. You don't give up the X plays or the big plays. That was the problem in Seattle in week two. They eliminated that yesterday. You make them earn it. You make them get into those third down situations, and then hopefully at some point you can get off the field. And yesterday the Titans did. Sometimes it didn't come until the red zone. Sometimes the Colts got points. But if you can hold people to field goals, if you can get off the field on third down, you've got a shot. Now, the third part of that equation is get, get turnovers. And that has been a problem for the Titans to this point this year. Three turnovers offensively yesterday. That's now seven for the season. And the defense has forced just one. So the Titans are minus six in turnover margin. This has been a team that's been really good in that area over the last couple of years. Not so far through three weeks of the season. But yet, yesterday they win a game at minus three in turnover margin which Mike Vrabel said after the game is basically impossible. The last time the Titans did that, by the way, back in 2007. So it kind of is impossible in a sort of figurative sense. It's been that long for them to overcome the type of mistakes they had yesterday. And they did it yesterday against one of their biggest rivals, one of the biggest thorns in their side, at least in the AFC South. So a big, big win yesterday. Big time effort from the Titans defense. Ola Adeni with a sack and a half. He's now got two and a half sacks in the last two weeks. Harold Landry continues to cause problems there. Christian Fulton was really good. David Long stepped into the lineup again and was really good. You like what you saw from the defense. It's not great. It's not a great defense. But we've seen some improvement, and right now, that defense ranks 15th in total D in the NFL. Remember last year, they were 28th in that category, and we all said then, oh man, if they could just make a little bit of improvement defensively, if they could go from the bottom of the pack in the NFL in defense and get up there to the top 20, to the middle of the pack, 
Think how good this team could be with that offense. Well, the defense has done that, at least over the past two weeks. And if they can continue to do that, that's exactly what you're looking for. Now you're looking for that offense to really click on all cylinders because last year they averaged 30 points a game. It was 13 in week one. Even yesterday it was 25 because of the injuries. At some point that offense has to click into high gear. I think everybody expects it to happen. But until then, having the defense step up the way it has is huge for this team. Phone lines are open, 737-7767. We want to hear from you tonight. Your thoughts on what happened in the game yesterday, how encouraged you are by the Titans' win. And I also want to talk about this. Julio Jones taken out of the game in the fourth quarter. What happened there? No real sign of an injury. What happened there? We're going to get into that, plus your phone calls when we come back. 737-7767 is the number. Stay tuned. You're watching Titans Talk here on News Channel 5+. Plus.